Hey everyone, Charlie Mandana, the chart guys. A little bit of risk off today in the markets. Gonna update some of the swing trades, JNJ, NVDA from the past couple of days. And we'll see if fear is creeping into the market or is this healthy daily consolidation? So the big question to start today was, is the NASDAQ going to lose the stair-step pattern of a higher low every day, which we had seen for the last five days, and join the S&P 500 in the daily consolidation? We saw SPY start daily consolidation yesterday and was looking for QQQ to join today. And we did shortly after the open, and the bears followed through in a very big way. And it was a, a wall of support. You can see from Monday, we held that level. Tuesday, yesterday, we held it at the end of the day. And then this morning, we attempted to hold it. And again, just absolutely fell right through it. So it was a nice solid bear day for the NASDAQ and for NASDAQ related names, semiconductors, and of course, tech. But now we're watching to see, does hourly oversold, which we got to, does that mark our higher low just like last time? Tomorrow's a pretty important day for me to gauge this consolidation on the NASDAQ. So back here on the 28th, we had hourly oversold and that marked the daily higher low right off EMA 12. We haven't even tested daily EMA 12, it came close, but it's the same deal. We got an hourly bounce into the end of the day if we break the low of today, tomorrow, we can say hourly oversold did not mark the daily higher low. That will be notable to me. That will be a point in the bear column. If we hold the low of today, tomorrow, then it is possible that we're just forming another daily higher low to keep this uptrend going. So a close eye on that. We can see the NASDAQ pulled back at 70 daily RSI. Certainly haven't stayed above 70 daily RSI recently. And that's pretty much been marking the tops twice back here, two, three times back here. And all time highs is the last time that RSI got above 70 in any meaningful way. And so here's another rejection from that 70 level. As far as the S&P 500's consolidation, it too is still very healthy. Again, we're not worried about losing the daily uptrend right now. The question is, are we going to pull back enough so that when we do form the most likely scenario of a daily higher low, is it a big enough pullback first to then anticipate a lower high as the, the most likely result from there? Because again, you look at the S&P 500 and it's just fine. It's a potential bull flag still at this point. And the reason it's just fine is because healthcare was up. I think healthcare, you know, I did a rough measuring, but I believe it was the, the largest green day in the healthcare sector in something like four months. Certainly for the year. So that is notable. Semiconductors pulling back. There's a little bit of bearish news here pre-market. And you'll find that my swing trades have benefited from news in the direction that I'm swinging them. And JNJ benefited from bullish news yesterday after hours. And then NVDA bears benefited from news pre-market. It was something, you know, China, semiconductors, whatever the headline was. And that could be luck. Definitely luck is a part of it. But we know that you can see news in charts before the news hits. And that's because people are in the know and it's this kind of, this catalyst of a chain reaction. And the example that I'm giving is, you know, we had a, a member, Justin, in our, our chat room who was looking at Dogecoin and recognizing a shift in Dogecoin two days before Elon Musk, you know, puts the, the Twitter icon as the Doge icon and it shoots up 25%. So you can sometimes see the news in the charts and in my opinion, the relative weakness in NVDA, which is the reason I shorted it yesterday, and then we get the bearish news to have gap downs open in the semiconductor, I don't think that's a coincidence. But nice drop. Ended up taking a little bit more profit in NVDA. We'll talk about that in just a second. And it's a potential head and shoulders pattern. So key support is 246.43. If we hold that level, the bears have to confirm this head and shoulders if we're going to see a notable pullback because right now the daily uptrend is still intact. And I am watching this as a potential rising wedge because the bull breaks have been lacking follow through. This is a rising wedge, a potential rising wedge on the daily time frame, And I'm absolutely watching it until it resolves itself. Doesn't mean we can't bounce, but paying close attention. So NVDA, I wasn't intending on swing trading this. It was a day trade from yesterday and we closed weak enough where I said, all right, we got a double top at 280. I'm seeing some relative weakness. Again, it was the fact that NVDA divided by QQQ. I cannot stress enough 
how much the relative strength and relative weakness observations have leveled up my trading in the last three years. Certainly with swing trading, which I needed to improve upon as my day trading is much stronger than my swing trading, but it was the daily lower high on NVDA divided by QQQ, and now we lost the uptrend. So we have weekly consolidation underway on this pairing. So we can say that today, NVDA was the weakest it's been compared to the NASDAQ in two weeks. NVDA hit the higher high on the daily, but there was the relative weakness. So ended up taking a little bit more profit. And I think I took a third of the remaining position that I have off at about 267 or so. And so now I am down to half, around half of my initial day trade position size. I think so, yeah. And what I'm looking for is, are we gonna roll over into weekly consolidation? I would like to have my target be weekly EMA 12 and another 10% drop. That's obviously pretty hopeful, but I'm gonna let it play out a little bit further because now that I've taken enough profit, you know, my break even on this trade is right around 280, if not above it. So I can stick a stop above 280 and not be risking anything. And again, that is my style of swing trade, selling up to get risk-free, let it play out. So NVDA is still a daily uptrend as long as 258.50 holds. And the big question tomorrow is, can bulls confirm an hourly uptrend to set a new daily higher low? Healthcare, again, just straight up the last few days. And nice recovery from the bulls because we had a confirmed daily uptrend for the first time in months and that caught our eye. And then it was, uh uh-oh, we gotta be cautious here because we've got no follow through. And then we got that follow through. So the V-shaped bounce here is pretty darn meaningful. If you look at the weekly timeframe, the retracement size that we're seeing at this point is over 50%. And so we got a monthly tightening range. And so I'm just viewing this as all time high, low of the pullback, lower high or double top, higher low. And we're gonna be looking for volatility to pick up notably in the healthcare sector the second half of this year. Maybe we bounce another month, maybe we pull back a month after that, but second half of this year, we're gonna break this tightening monthly range and we're either gonna confirm a four month bull flag off EMA 12 support. Did we even hit it? No, didn't even hit it yet. It's either gonna be a four month bull flag in the continuation, just like Apple is a potential four month bull flag or if it's a bear break of this tightening range, it's gonna be the most weakness that the healthcare sector has seen since 2008. So we'll see over the next handful of months. But again, my game plan for JNJ at this point, after taking some profit yesterday, again, no regrets whatsoever. Put me back in a time capsule, I do the exact same thing. Sell uh, 40% of my position at my target of weekly EMA 12, Oh, but if I held the news and it would have blah, 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 can't look at it that way. So it's now performing very nicely. And so is this a long-term bottom being set for J&J? I'm going to have a position if it is, a risk-free position. And if it's not, I don't lose a dollar. So that is my game plan. And I might be holding this position ideally for years if we see recovery, but that's the game plan from here. So not going to be updating J&J on a daily basis because I'm not actively trading it anymore. I've taken my profit that I was going to, my break even is under 150 and that is that. Let it play out for weeks or months. In an ideal world, it's a four month bull flag holding EMA 12 for continuation. We'll see. Financial sector. So the most important thing for me now on XLF and IWM, same thing. Can we confirm the daily uptrend? So the Bear sectors have been joining the bulls over the last couple of weeks. And if they confirm the first daily uptrend in over a month, that will continue to be the case. So XLF today was pretty much flat. And if the bulls can turn around and break 32.34, which is about one and a half percent to the upside, that's going to be very notable for me. IWM, same deal. A little bit more pullback on IWM, but it has to do the same thing. We have to hold 167.46 and break 179.78 for the bulls to prove to us that they are gaining some control in their favor. KRE, the regional banks, still very weak. We tested the fear low, came very close to it, and it's still holding at this point. Going to be watching daily EMA 12 and the clear daily lower highs. And this is going to influence my view on the financial sector, XLF, a bit. 
If it can hold its fear low, then we're going to look for XLF to confirm its daily uptrend. If it breaks its fear low, that's going to decrease the probabilities that XLF confirms the daily uptrend a bit. But clearly XLF is stronger than KRE, and it makes logical sense, fundamentally speaking, as far as your major banks that have been benefiting from inflows being a part of XLF and the weaker, or I should say the smaller banks, seeing the outflows in KRE. AI. So I'm now getting interested looking long AI. Done, I did a little bit of trading, you know, back and forth. Today, what stood out to me? Relative strength. Look at when we hit the low of the day. At that point in time, the low of the day was at 1042. What was QQQ doing at 1042? It was dropping. Spoiler alert. So 1042, we were trading right here. So I'm watching AI trade sideways and shape up a two minute uptrend from 10.42 to 11.04, we'll call it 20 minutes. And so this was, QQQ was dropping for 20 minutes. So why would I wanna long something if QQQ is in free fall? Well, at that point in time, the 15 minute RSI was in the teens and it got all the way down to 11. So I'm looking at that saying, all right, well, I know QQQ is going to see a 15 minute over, oversold bounce shortly. The five minute RSI is hitting the teens. The 15 minute RSI is in the low teens. And we're hitting first hourly oversold conditions, technically a back burner. And so for me, that was enough for me to say, if, if AI can trade sideways while QQQ keeps dropping, AI is going to be positioned well to bounce when QQQ sees this inevitable oversold bounce. And so QQQ found its low at 11, and we bounced till 11.35, and AI from 11 to 11.35 did this. And it doesn't look like much, but that's 3%. And from the low, that's 5% or 4%. So opportunity. Recognize the relative strength. If we had dropped down and hit a lower low and followed QQQ down, I would have been out and stopped out. But fortunately, that didn't play out. And then knew that 15 minute lower high was the most likely scenario. And I was itching like, mm, I know a bigger bounce is coming eventually. Do I want to try and let this play out? Sold partial. And then once we double topped at 22.20 on the two minute time frame, and then lost the two minute uptrend, I know that's the indication the 15 minute lower high is being set. A failed trade I had today was a, a tiny loss on Netflix trying for the hourly lower high. And I was looking to short it right about here. And so ended up, it was a 15 minute stair step and the red flag was the stair step breaking bear with zero follow through. So I actually was shorting it a little bit earlier, shorting it here and stopped out there. And then in hindsight, back burner indicator, if I had waited for the five minute back burner on Netflix, that would have been close enough to the top that that would have given me a green trade. So the hindsight was a little bit more patient, wait for your indicator. And we pulled back a percent from there. Not a huge win, but it would have been a green trade rather than a small red trade. First five minute overbought conditions, looking for an hourly lower high as the most likely scenario after bouncing you know, a couple percent. Gold still holding on, four hour consolidation underway. So we're going to look for a four hour high or low. Bulls want to hold EMA 12. Ideally, we've already bounced right off of it. 15 minute oversold conditions off EMA 12. We see that in crypto all the time to try and set four hour higher lows. Silver, four hour higher low trying to be set quickly here as well. And the miners also seeing continuation. GDX is now in a stair step pattern seven days in a row. It's going to be back burner. We're going to look for first hourly oversold conditions to scout a daily higher low on GDX once it starts pulling back. But metals and miners definitely enjoying things. And what they need to see now is DXY break the low of 100 and 82 cents. Oil still tight. Inventory report, not really doing a whole lot. So high, low, pretty much a double top. Held support, resistance, support. We're just getting real tight here. Volatility tomorrow is likely as this tight range breaks. 
If it's a bear break, we're going to look for first hourly oversold conditions. Came close to that today. Be aware that Friday we've got some jobs data coming out and no trading. We're going to see more volatility over the weekend because of that. Friday is a holiday. There's, the markets are closed. It's a bit odd that they've got this pretty important data that everybody fundamentally is looking towards. Right now, it's the, the jobs market that everybody's looking at to try and determine is the Fed going to pivot or not. So that's Friday data. Just be aware of the, that with any swing trades. Natural guess. Broke the sideways range bullish. No follow through. Got to back test and hold this EMA 12 and see a break of 214 for this to be a successful reversal as far as building this base of support. So we started to try and do that today and got to hold this EMA 12 and see them cross bull, the 12 and the 26, and see that confirmed four hour uptrend from here. So my game plan from here is pretty low key. You know, it worked really well to have a really strong bull and a really strong bear swing. And it'd be nice to always have that happen. But from here, it's just essentially babysitting NVDA a little bit to determine how much of a, a leash do I want to give this trade to try and play out. But other than that, just uh, little day trades and AI. I am interested in AI for a long here soon, tomorrow, maybe. So look at this support zone on AI. Obviously, we're extremely beat up the last two days, but there is a triple bottom of support just above 20, and we bounced at 20.50 today. So tomorrow, if we can hold this 20 support zone, I'm going to look for uh, a more significant hourly bounce, maybe, you know, 10% bounce. So I'm going to keep an eye out for a bottom fish play tomorrow. The two things that would make me interested in longing it were, would be holding the zone and then bouncing or breaking it with zero follow through and then looking for that bounce. Keeping in mind, we're not that beat up. You know, four hour is not oversold. The daily is not oversold. The hourly has gotten oversold plenty on the way down. But essentially, you know, after pulling back in two days, a drop of 39%, I'm looking for the bears to be a bit exhausted and I'm looking for short covering and bounce players to lead to a 10% bounce eventually. And we'll see if tomorrow starts to shape that up. All right. Hope you're well. Do good things. And I'll do a video tomorrow, even though it's the last day of the week. I'm going to do a long-term pattern check-in video over the weekend. See you soon.